the Samsung Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus already been launched. They are one of the most beautiful devices you can see right now. This is a device that every Android user can expect to have. It, it builds in so much feature, the waterproofing, the iris scanner, the sleek design, the one of the most beautiful display ever created on any Android phone right now. So guys, uh, these are all the, some of the things that you can see for the Galaxy. Now obviously, this is one of the most costly Android phone too. It should be costing near to, you know, $900. It's just exactly, uh, you can see, matching with the iPhone's prices. But how about the performance? No, not all the people are looking for, you know, specs all this. For example, you might not need a waterproofing all day, all time. You might be not needing iris scan and everything for you. Fingerprint sensor works fine. Or the uh, uh, unlocking with the password works fine. But how about the performance? Each day you're going to use certain set of applications. That is more important to you. How does it work in day-to-day -day real life usage? Well, guys, I still have time uh, when it will launch in India. I'll buy the device and I will show you guys all the possible kind of day-to-day -day usage comparing with other previous flagship devices. But I was just thinking, many other people on the YouTube have already got the device. For example, in the US, a lot of people are getting it from the Verizon AT&T. So how about the comparing the benchmarking scores that those guys have found out with the current generation devices. Now, I'm really sorry guys, I don't have a device right now. But once I have the device, I will really show you in front of you. But I'm just taking reference for some other channels. So. And I want to just compare the same geek at the end of the benchmark score with the current flagship devices. Now, these are not called as the current flagship. They're running the 2016 Snapdragon 821. But how about comparing with the Snapdragon 835? So guys, let's go and compare the benchmarking score of Snapdragon 835 versus the Snapdragon 821 and also we will compare it with the previous generation Snapdragon 820 which is running on the OnePlus 3 which is again very fast device but 6 gigabytes of RAM is too much to run all the tasks so let's get started and check out so guys as you can see this is a score of the uh, comparing the Galaxy S8 Plus with the iPhone 7 Plus so, uh, this is the key benchmark result we have a score of 1846 single core multi core is 5929 now let's compare with this uh, uh, other iPhone in terms of antidote. So this is again 168. Now this is why, uh, this is the main reason why I brought this comparison. Because at some moment of time, I did found the scores of 168 uh, near to 168.535 something of my OnePlus 3T, which is again running with the Snapdragon 821. So that is the reason I thought why, how much the Snapdragon 835 can perform comparing other devices. So let me show you some other, uh, you can say continuous scores for the Snapdragon 821 running on the OnePlus 3T. So guys, as you can see, uh, this is our scores here right now, Geek benchmark score uh, of the OnePlus 3T running the various numbers of bills. So, uh, whatever builds come for the OnePlus 3T updates, uh, it, they are just uh, multi core is always above the 4K and the single core is always to 17K, which is again uh, comparing with the Galaxy score. Uh, it is uh, it definitely should be less because you know you got uh, the better cores and the processor on the Galaxy. Now, let's talk about this uh, end to the uh, score for the OnePlus 3D. So, this is here you can see. As you can see, I have shown you some of the uh, time at the moment. I did have managed to get 167K uh, score and the 68 which is again uh, quite comparable to what you are getting in the galaxies right now so these are the scores when i have taken when it was running with the android nougat uh, 7.0 now these are the again same android nougat 7.0 so you can see still uh, the high number of ramps matters a lot and how the softwares are being optimized this is also matter so now guys let's compare the same score with the oneplus 3 so as you can see uh, it is again uh, floating near to the 4k and the single core is uh, near to uh, you can say uh, 1,615 above, so quite near but not as comparable to what you're getting in the galaxies. Again, uh, it is not bad score, so Snapdragon 835 definitely is a great, but if the Samsung puts 6 GB of RAM, so I'm sure the scores are going to fly a lot, but I don't know why Samsung is putting 4 GB of RAM. Anyway guys, now let's compare the same score with the Google Pixel XL. So this is the score of the Google Pixel XL, which is running the latest version of the Android Nougat 7.1.2 which is again uh, quite close to the OnePlus 3T but not close to the OnePlus uh, Galaxy S8. Again guys, the uh, Snapdragon 85 proves to be much stronger and you know faster. So uh, these Snapdragon 822 devices are getting sort of low in comparing to the S8 but I think they are working very great. So in terms of paper and real life difference uh, is a you know different aspect. So comparing the N22 definitely it is a quite low compared to what you are getting in the Snapdragon uh, E35 processor running in the Galaxy. And again, this is a quick result uh, for the Android Nougat 7.1.1 for the Google Pixel XL. So guys, these are a quick uh, score comparison between the Snapdragon 835 running on the Galaxy S8, S8 Plus and the, some previous flagship devices like OnePlus 3T and the 
Google Pixel XL. So, but personally, I think uh, it actually depends uh, some more on the software improvement too, like how clean the software you have made. Now, Galaxies are always known to be, you know, filled with so much bloatware and tech, which is kind of slow. But Samsung has mentioned that they have improved the thing, and this time OS is much clean. So that personally, I will figure out when I will get the device and I will give you guys a. A detailed walkthrough of how the test with UI looks like compared to the official stock Android and all the stuff. So, guys, this is just a quick comparison. I just thought to show you guys you might enjoy this in case you have the previous generation's devices. Snapdragon 22. I'll sure show you all the latest stuff when I have the device, the Galaxy S8 Plus. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. Do let me know in the comment what kind of scores do we have got on your devices. So, how much do you think Snapdragon 25 is really worth to buy or not? So, again, thank you so much. I'll catch you very soon. Have a great day.